You it is good yo it's your boy time back here with another video and in this video today guys we're gonna be going over the top 10 power forwards in nba 2k23 my team and i do want you guys to know this list has changed a ton since the last time we did this list because there are a lot of new great cards in my team if you see my head going back and forth i'm actually afking my way in clutch time offline Hoping to get uh, to get the reward we're looking for in, in in clutch time offline as well. So obviously, you know, trying to multitask here a little bit, but you know, we're gonna be locked in on this because again, I'm AFK. I don't really have to pay too much attention to this thing. Again, a lot of great power forwards in my team. Gonna be ranking them from ten to one. Started it off here at number ten, Pink Diamond Cliff Robinson. Now, some honorable mentions that were close. Carl Malone was close to making this list. And so was like a Dennis Robin. Those two guys could have made me made the case for, but didn't quite make it. Cliff Robinson here, pink diamond, 87 three ball, decent standing driving dunk, decent playmaking, really solid defensively. The thing I like the most about Cliff Robinson, I think, are just his defensive badges, right? I mean, you look at his defensive badges, anchor, challenger, clamps, glove, menace, pink dodger, pogo stick, uh, does get post locked down a workhorse. All of those on Hall of Fame. Like, you can't make those up. He has literally nine hall of fame defensive badges shooting wise is perfect doesn't come with uh you know or he does come with unbuckable doesn't come with limitless range can't get it which does hurt his uh, value a little bit but the molin base on quick like he's got a smooth release kobe upper mj dribble style normal leaner you could honestly make the case if you wanted to that cliff robinson should be higher on uh, on here on this top 10 i personally don't like him enough to be any higher but again if you want to put him at you know maybe at number eight seven I really wouldn't be the one to argue that, okay? I wouldn't. Number 10, Pink Diamond Cliff Robinson, really solid. At number nine, this one might be personal bias for me, Galaxy Opal Dolph Shays. I love Dolph Shays, man. I really love Dolph Shays. And again, a lot of people might not love him as much as me, but for me, he's kind of the whole package. And hear me out, okay? He's got a total of 47 base badges. I know he's only 6'8". A lot of people don't love that. But he's got a 93 ball, really solid standing, really solid driving dunk, obviously 89 speed, solid defensively. The card comes with Hall of Fame limitless range, catch and shoot. Doesn't come with quick first step, doesn't come with unpluckable, can't get challenger. And that's why some people don't love Dolph Shades. It's because he can't get some of those badges. But what I would personally uh, try to get you guys to look at is Okay, sure, but look what he does get, okay? Kuzma base on quick, normal leaner, MJ dribble style. And for me, he's one of the most, he has one of the best and easiest releases to green in the entire game. Like when Dolph Shays first came out, I was unsure about him or the Galaxy Opal AD who could be on this list. It's crazy to me that Galaxy Opal AD isn't on this list. That's crazy to me. You could have him on this list. I just, I like Dolph Shays more. That's my personal opinion here. Coming in at number nine, just kind of the whole package, way better offensively than defensively, but I mean, the card can get it done at all levels. At number eight, a lot of you guys are going to hate me for this, Galaxy Open Nikola Jokic. In my opinion, one of the most overrated players in the entire game. And I know I'm going to get a lot of heat for that. I know a lot of people aren't going to like me saying that, but that's my opinion. I don't rate Jokic as high as a lot of people do. I just, when I did my gameplay of him, I didn't love him. When I play against Jokic, he really doesn't strike fear into me. It's just one of those things I personally don't think he's great. I know he's 6'11", 7'3", wingspan, 95 three ball with a decent release. People can gas this Eric Pascal release. I'm not saying it's bad. It's decent. I mean, people are going to say it's great. People are going to say it's, you know, outstanding. It's decent, okay? Basic leaner hurts him. MJ Drew's style. I know he gets quick. He has quick drop dunks. But defensively, he's mid. Mediocre. Is he going to be better than Dolph Shays defensively? Absolutely. But again, he's not great defensively. I, I, I just think Jokic is overall really solid. People are going to gas him because, I get, I, and again, badge-wise, he's perfect. Maybe I just got to use the card more, but for me, I didn't love the release when I first used him. I mean, I thought there were better cards in the game when I first used him. He's coming in here at number eight. I mean, number eight, though, is still not bad. It's not like I'm saying the card is horrible, right? I mean, he's fine. At number seven, E. Jinlian. A card I personally think a lot of people are at this stage underrated. And again, that's not me saying that, that he is the best card of the game. 
But I feel like nobody is really talking about this card, and they should be. I mean, he gives you so much on the basketball court. And if you compare him to Jokic, I'm going to do that at the after I go over this. Because you can compare these cards, and I'll let you guys be the judge. But let's start with this. He has a 94 three ball, good standing driving dunk, really solid playmaking, 85 speed, really solid defensively. Hall of Fame anchor interceptor, post lockdown rebound chaser. He doesn't come with unpluckable, but you can give it. Shooting wise, comes with limitless range. Finishing wise is incredible. Good tendencies. This release on quick I wouldn't say it's necessarily the quickest release in the game, but it's super easy to green. And that's the one thing I would give Jin Lee it is it's super easy to green, normally in an MJ dribble style. So let's do it. Let's compare him to Jokic, because I know a lot of people watching this love Jokic more than E. And I get it, right? Plus 127. But you guys got to realize a lot of that's post moves. A lot of that's passing, which do those matter? I mean, I guess a little bit. His speed is a little bit better. I'll give him credit. He is a little bit taller. Jokic has that wider player model player build. Animations, though, normal leaner compared to basic leaner, that matters. To me, you can make the case either way. I'm giving Jin Lian the slight edge. At number six, we're plugging in Bob Nedelecki. Now, a lot of guys are going to be like, Ty, he's only 6'9". Are you seriously putting him over a guy like Jokic? I absolutely am. Now, hear me out, and, here, and here's why, right? Movement-wise, MJ Dribble Style at 6'9", really tough to guard. The Brissette release better than Jokic's, better than Jin Lian's. I don't think anybody should be able to really test me or debate me on that. I mean, I think it's a pretty easy statement to say that the Brissette release is better than those. Um, now, if you prefer the Jin Lian release or the Jokic base, I mean, I'm not going to say that's just out of the realm of possibilities because you definitely could. But let's be honest, the Brissette base is better. 83 three ball feels like mid-90s. 86 speed defensively though look at all these badges just absolutely elite can get unpluckable can get you know limitless or comes with limitless can give him blinders i just really like bob net like and i feel like the stats and badges don't tell the full story it's really his release and if you know you know at number five galaxy open dirk novinsky and i know a lot of people are going to be upset that he is at number five instead of number four but look this might be free card bias for me but say how it is, Dirk 7173 wingspan, he's absolutely incredible. The reason I'm not higher on Dirk is because I personally think he lacks a lot of badges. Because for me and Dirk, I'm going to want to give him handles for days. I'm going to want to give him unpluckable. I'm going to want to give him vice grip. I'm going to want to give him ankle braces, challenger, glove, interceptor, off ball pass, pick dodger, workhorse. Probably going to want to give him limitless, takeoff, posterizer, all these badges, fast twitch. And he only has six badge spots, right? Fully maxed out, you're getting 45 badges out of Dirk. And I just don't think that's a ton. Plus, defensive stats, I'm not going to sit here and say they're horrible, but they're definitely not great for Dirk Nowitzki. So, as good as his release is, as good of a stretch big as he is, because he is probably the best stretch big in the entire game, he's not perfect. And that's what you guys got to realize for Dirk. I really like the card, but his price is a little too much to pay when at number four, I got Galaxy, the Galaxy Opal KG. Now again, Max Dirk is going to have 30, 45 badges. Base KG has 46 badges. Max KG, you're looking at 52 badges. That's where KG wins me over compared to Dirk. Defensively going to be a little bit better as well. Is he going to shoot the ball as well as Dirk? No. But everything else on the court, movement-wise, defensively, even, I mean, is he, does he have as good of a release? Probably not. But his release is still really, really solid in my team. So as much as I know a lot of people are going to like Dirk more than KG, I have KG that won a step higher at number four. Again, you guys can say it's free card bias. And honestly, if you want to say that, I'm not going to be the one to argue it. Because look, I always have free card bias, especially when 2K banned me from 250. You think I'm paying for Dirk Nowitzki? You're absolutely crazy. Coming in at number three. We have our collector level reward, Moses Malone. Now, when I first made the video, I said Moses Malone was the best power forward in my team. And honestly, I haven't used Moses, so I think it's too crazy of me to put him at number one. But look at how good Moses Malone is. I mean, honestly, look at how good he is. 6'10", 7'2", wingspan, hot spots from both corners. Can get every badge in the game defensively. Everything's on Hall of Fame except four badges. I really think this card is it in my team. Great standing up, great dra driving up, great playmaker, MJ dribble style, Malone based on very quick, normal leaner, perfect tendencies. I mean, what more could you ask for out of Moses Malone? That's what I'm trying to figure out. Like, if you don't love Moses Malone, I'm trying to figure out why. Because what more could he provide you in your squad? I don't know. 
Is he worth get going for a collector level? Absolutely not. I will, I will never never sit here and, you know, gas him that much and say he's worth going for a collector level because he's absolutely not. But is the card really solid? And if you have him, is he probably worth using? Absolutely. I'm just telling you guys how it is. He is that good in my team. And if I had Moses Malone, I would 110% be using him. Coming in at number two, Dark Matter Giannis Antetokounmpo. Now, I think you can make the case any of my top three could be at number one. It's just really tough. The one thing I will say about Giannis is I think he's probably the best defensive player on this list. And to go along with that, the best player at attacking the rim. So if you like those two things, if those are the two things that are most important for you and your specific squad, sure, make the case that that, that, that Giannis is your number one. I'm fine with that. His player motto is absolutely elite. Defense, he has every badge on Hall of Fame outside of two. Playmaker-wise, perfect. He can even get limitless range. Now, the problem for me and Giannis is, number one, he only has a 79 three ball. Yes, when you do upgrade it, when you do get that coach boost, it feels like a 99. I will 100% agree with that. But with that being said, I don't love the release of Giannis. Even if it's on quick, it doesn't feel that quick. Is it easy to green? Absolutely. I'm not going to argue that his release is not easy to green because it is really, really easy to green. But is that enough for him to be number one for me? It's just not. It's just not. I know Giannis is great. And if it came down to it in 250K, Giannis probably would be starting for me at the power forward position. But to me, a lot of people run him at small forward. And this guy, I think, is the best card right now to run at that power forward position. That is Dark Matter David Robinson. A lot of people might argue Giannis, Moses Malone. But D-Rob, to me, is the most complete card. From top to bottom, from defense to offense, I think he is, okay? Max Dow can get 53 base badges, basically all of the important badges you might want to give him. Give him unpluggable, give him limitless, slippery off ball, handle strays, those types of badges. He's going to be just fine. Playmaker wise, fine. Rebounding wise, fine. Obviously, defensively, absolutely elite. The big difference between D Rob and Giannis is D Rob's jump shot is going to be better than Giannis's, okay? That's the big difference, as well as him having a better three ball, right? Giannis movement wise is going to be better, right? Giannis obviously attacking the rim, finishing is going to be better. Giannis, even defensively, I would give that slight advantage too. But as an overall card at that power forward position, I think D Rob is it. Now, again, Similar to Giannis, a lot of people are going to have Giannis at small forward or running Giannis at small forward. A lot of people probably are going to be running David Robinson at that other center position outside, you know, outside of Yao, right? Because obviously I think Yao is the best center right now. And then <clears throat> we'll get to the center list, but I think D-Rob is that next best, right? I think those two have a big separation over, you know, who you guys would have at number three and four. So that's for me why I'm not necessarily sold on D-Rob at the, at the four or, or, or Giannis at the four. I'd probably, you know, run Giannis at the three, D-Rob at the five, and then you'd have to move KG up. You'd have to move Moses up. You'd have to move Dirk all up if, it, if I just did, you know, one player for specific tiers. But D-Rob's going to be on that center year list uh, when I do release that. Giannis was obviously on that small forward list because a lot of people are going to run them at that power forward position. I want to know your guys' thoughts down below in the comments. Who is I too high on? Who is I too low on? Are you guys upset that I left a guy like a uh, Anthony Davis off the list? Are you guys upset that I didn't include like even a Joe Ellen beat at the power forward list? So probably be on the center list. But I need to know that down below in the comments. Maybe even a Jaron Jackson Jr., you guys think should have made this list. So hopefully you guys did enjoy the video. Drop a like on it. Subscribe if you are new. And as always, man, I love you guys. Never bless death.